In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the landscape of 3D sculpting software currently. I mean, the best 3D sculpting software today, and what makes them unique, and the updates and features they have been added recently. As you probably already know, ZBrush remains the go-to sculpting software for professionals, used in almost all AAA game studios and big production VFX houses. It is famous for handling crazy polygon counts, I mean, Dealing with millions of polygons in ZBrush is like the average day for a ZBrush sculpting artist, which means giving artists unparalleled detail. While its interface is kinda quirky, it is a go-to tool for high-res character and creature sculpting, and it is the best for a seasoned artist or anyone aiming to work in the film or game development industry. And in the last couple of years, ZBrush hasn't slowed down. For example, we've got ZBrush on iPad, which means you can now take ZBrush on the go, and the 2025 update and a support for exporting your sculpts to ZBrush for iPad, included free with a ZBrush subscription. This means you can start sculpting on the desktop and continue on the tablet, which in my opinion is kind of a game changer for flexibility. We also got new sculpting brushes and tools. ZBrush included a quick poly group brush for instantly grouping parts of your mesh and an anchor brush bend mode that helps in bending or posing geometry more naturally. These tools make it easier to segment and deform your model without the tedious masking. And here's the interesting thing. Since ZBrush joined Maxon, it gained the ability to use Redshift for real-time previews. The latest release is expanded Redshift integration with support for features like render passes and an AI denoiser, and made lighting and material updates in the viewport feel much quicker and responsive, in addition to many other things they added in the last couple of years. Another sculpting software that not many people talk about is 3D Code. 3D Code is actually a specialized sculpting for topology, voxel modeling, and texturing tool, which feels like a Swiss army knife for making 3D models and characters. This is actually a commercial software, but it is more affordable than ZBrush. And in my opinion, what makes 3D Code stand out is its voxel sculpting, which allows you to freely add and subtract clay without worrying about geometry topology. This, in addition to its built-in auto topology and UV in. Generally speaking, it is great for concept artists who want to sculpt first, then automatically get a usable mesh, as well as for 3D painters who want to do everything in one place. And it is best for those who need sculpting, in addition to a quick path for texturing and low-poly models, like indie developers, concept designers, and so on. But honestly, anyone can use it. Pilkoi, the company behind 3D Code, have packed the latest versions with some very interesting features. For example, at last they added vector displacement maps, or VDM brush support, meaning you can sculpt complex overhang details with one stroke, like ZBrush's alpha brushes. This allows for stamping detailed shapes that portrayed in 3D, not just along a normal. They also introduced a pick and paste tool. You can literally copy a piece of your sculpt and paste it elsewhere, and this is super handy for using shapes. Sculpt layers got some love too. The system supports multi-resolution sculpting with layers, so you can step up or step down subdivision levels and even sculpt paint details at different resolutions. As you may know, 3D code was always Boolean friendly, thanks to voxels, but now it has live Boolean models to add, subtract, or intersect volumes in real time. In addition to this, a groundbreaking addition in 3D code 2025 is a new node room for a sculpt workspace. This is a system that lets you create non-destructive and procedural volumetric effects on your sculpt via nodes. For example, you could stack noise deformers or material effects and tweak them after the fact. It is like having modifiers for your sculpting process. Also, the developers of 3D Code introduced a one-click reality capture photogrammetry integration. Essentially, you can take real-world photos and generate a 3D scan, then bring it back into 3D Code's sculpt room for cleaning up or detailing. In Blender, on the other hand, the sculpt mode has grown into a legit sculpting platform, if you will, which I think makes it a great choice for hobbyists, indie game developers, or anyone working on a budget. And here is the thing. Blender sculpting is intuitive for beginners as opposed to, say, ZBrush, and it has been improving recently too. Recent Blender updates actually brought some interesting improvements to sculpting. For example, Blender 4.3 made massive performance boosts. The result, entering the sculpt mode 
has become many folds faster, and brushes respond much faster too, and memory usage dropped about 30%. In practice, this means you can sculpt high poly counts with less lag. The interface got a sculpting overhaul too. They added a brush asset shelf that display all the brushes with thumbnails and organized into categories. You could easily customize this shelf, create your own brushes, and even assign custom icons. The side toolbar is revamped too, to put masking, face chats, trimming, and painting tools at your fingertips. And generally speaking, it feels much more like a dedicated sculpting software now, not what it was before. Blender developers also have been busy inventing brushes, and recent updates introduced goodies like the plateau brush for flattening areas into plateaus, the trim brush to cut away bits of mesh, grab 2D, which is a planar grab that moves geometry along screen plane, in addition to a pull brush. There are also specialized cloth brushes too, to simulate fabric folds, like expand, cloth grab, and so on, and better mask and lasso tools with smoothing for cleaner selections. This, in addition to handy quick radio menu, that lets you swap brushes without hunting through the UI. Also now, Blender is blurring the line between sculpting and painting. You can slap on vertex colors while sculpting without needing UVs, which is great for concepting color on high poly sculpts. The painting brushes in sculpt mode got upgraded too, so you can paint details directly on your sculpts in real time. Also, we have little things that make a difference, like pen tilt support, which means brushes react to your stylus angle and move naturally with strokes, in addition to a new manifold boolean solver that dynamically improves the speed and reliability of cutting or trimming a sculpt, and undo is more responsive in a sculpt mode. They actually fixed a brush thumbnail refresh glitch, and the class simulation filter now has options like gravity and inflate to help tag your model as if it is cloth. And generally speaking, this kind of pushed Blender sculpting to a new level. Now, with something totally different, but still helps with sculpting, I'm gonna talk about Nomad Sculpt, which is the rising star of mobile sculpting. It is like having a mini ZBrush in your iPad or Android tablet. This app is actually surprisingly fully flashed with a real sculpting toolset. You have dozens of brushes, multi-resolution, dynamic style remeshing, painting, and even post-processing. It has a touch interface and Apple Pencil support, which honestly makes it fun to use on the couch or on the go. Nomad is great for hobbyists, concept artists, especially when it comes to sketching ideas or when you want to work away from your desk. The interesting thing is that in 2025, it even gained some features that desktop apps have, which is kind of blurring the line between mobile and PC sculpting. But of course, the difference is not going to be going away, for obvious reasons. So I would say, don't underestimate this app, because it has all the features I just mentioned. This means you can subdivide for detail or decimate for level resolutions, or do boolean cuts and use layers to separate sculpted detail just like what you can do on a desktop software. And the layer system is kind of robust enough to handle geometry underneath, which is wild for a mobile app. And in a huge update, the application integrated quad rematcher algorithm. In one of its 2024 updates, so with a tab, you can convert your blobby sculpt into an all quad mesh for further detailing or exporting. This is basically ZBrush Z remesher on the tablet at your disposal. It makes creating animation-ready models or 3D prints much easier, and many users were thrilled to see automatic quad retopology come to mobile, which is awesome to be honest. It also supports both matcap rendering and full PBR lighting with reflections, so you can load any matcap for your viewport and improve its PBR materials. You can also paint vertex colors with metalness and roughness and see it in real time. So if you are sculpting a creature, for example, and paint its skin, you can do that with shiny scales and so on in the same app. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.